There we go. Welcome to the Daily Bee with Maddie B, episode six. So I am lone wolf today, and um, I'm going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff, and basically uh, owning some shit, taking responsibility, talking about whether people can change, what that looks like, and um, yeah, just how to move on from our past. Hey Nikita. Hey Rani. Good to see you guys on. How are we? Give us a wave. Give us some hearts. Tell us you can hear me okay. Johnny Killsby. Long time no see, brother. How are you, man? Give us some love. Lukey. So, hey man. Hey guys. Yeah, something that has been coming up for me specifically. Also, before um mm-hmm. hey buddy before jumping on i was just thinking about um who else i've spoken to that um has gone through this or that's sort of feeling similar hey nikita hey lukey um because i'm i've got some shit to own and just i know that if i can think of people to, to speak to that sort of helps me just i guess articulate instead of me just talking to myself so I I do know that there's a few of my friends and people that I've been working with who for a long, long time have been struggling with the feeling of not being good enough, um, not being worthy. um, And essentially feeling really fucking bad because of their past and wanting to make a change, wanting to be better but just not knowing how to reconcile the, all the shit that they've done in the past. Um, and it's really, it can be really fucking hard because some of us have done some pretty fucked up shit and we've hurt a lot of people and we've caused damage. Um, and so, yeah, I guess for me that has, has come up a bit recently being that I am, you know, doing a lot of inner work, creating a lot of changes in my life, wanting to help other people. And in reaching out and helping other people, what you find is like we we attract ourselves, everyone's a mirror. So the people I find myself helping a lot are bringing up the shit for me that I haven't dealt with or the stuff that's that's come up for me in my past. So um, if you guys have any experiences with this, I'd love to sort of get some questions or just sharing some experiences of what, what you've experienced. But, um, I'm going to be speaking to a friend tomorrow night about domestic violence, abuse in families, um, addictions. And one of the things that's come up for me is the way that I've behaved in the past, the way I've treated women in particular. Um, hey Beck, hey guys, um, the way I've treated women in particular and I have made, I've made people feel unsafe. I've made people feel, um, yeah, uneasy, uncomfortable. And I always judged people in domestic, um, or I just judged violence really because I've never never been a violent person. I've never hit anyone. I've never been in a fight. Um, however, what I didn't recognize was that I would get so caught up in my own feelings in my own head that I would allow my feelings in my head to take over my behaviors. And hey, Beck, hey, Emma. And, and those behaviors would then run the show. So it didn't matter what other people felt what other people said, how, how, what anyone else was going through, I would essentially put myself first at the detriment of them. And I, um, because I've never hurt anyone physically, but, but my behavior made people feel really unsafe and really uncomfortable in their own spaces, in their own homes. And it's fucked. Um, looking at, at me doing those things and, and behaving in those ways it's really full on. And I want to put my head on the chopping block a bit. One, to own my own shit. Um, 
but I guess also to be an example for other fellas out there and other women as well that are maybe not putting the person or the people that they care about before themselves and who are even beyond being violent, but who are emotionally, um, you know, abusing or hurting or manipulating the people around them for their own emotional gains to keep themselves safe. Yeah, thanks guys. Very honest, very amazing. Yeah, fuck. I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> um, where am I getting to? Look. I love earning my own shit. Inconsiderate. Yeah, yeah, being inconsiderate as well. It, it all stems from in, our own insecurities. Like, I recognize now that I was so fucking insecure. I was, I felt so unloved and, and, and like I wasn't being accepted that I, um, acted like a fucking idiot and pushed, um, pushed people I loved away. Hey Jared, long time brother. Um, I pushed people away because of my neediness, because of my, um, yeah, that, that sort of, that that need to hold on and be wanted and be desired and be loved. And, and, and because of that, it, it, I acted like a fucking fool. And so the people that, that saw me in those moments, um, yeah, they saw a really unappealing, unattractive, um, what's the word? seemingly um just flippant anything could happen sort of a, a personality come out of me shit is a great fertilizer essential for growth yeah bro that is right it is shit is a great fertilizer and i put a lot of people down who i judged who who behaved in certain ways um who did worse stuff than me and said fuck them fuck those guys fuck those girls for being that way get them out of your life and don't have them around and that yet here I am behaving in certain ways and and then asking for forgiveness in my own space it's such a hypocrisy and so I know that it's all here for our own evolution to help us uh, to help us grow but that in the moment if someone's not this self-aware then that shit doesn't matter I feel like the evolution of every human have all been there in some way. Yeah, fucking A. Absolutely, Emma. So I guess what... You don't have necessarily have to comment, but just think, like, what have you guys done that you know has made people feel like shit? You are attractive. You're like my walking twin. Yes, Helmo, of course I am. <laughs> what, yeah, what have you guys done that has maybe hurt someone or that have you've you've behaved in a way to satisfy your own ego and your own um, insecurities at the detriment of someone else is yeah I've yeah done fucked up stuff and it's not really cool I know now that the pain that I felt from the consequences of that behavior push me into making some pretty fucking drastic changes and when we look at that it balances out like well it, it balances out the equation in that sort of you know everything happens for a reason it's it's there to teach us to help us grow so there's a lot at the end of the tunnel i guess that just before you get to that point though we need to let go we need to allow ourselves and the people that we've um helped heal jealousy yeah cool thanks beck and we need to change some stuff, some stuff. So before getting to that space of f taking full responsibility, yeah, there just needs to be that healing and that, that changing, that letting go of that, of that paradigm of our, um, what we, how we've defined those experiences. I've fed into multiple relationships to fill voids, ones that didn't align, but I was lonely, insecure and in a horrible space. Yeah. 
absolute indicator when she hasn't deserved at all my anger and disrespect. Yeah, boom. And that's the thing, like these people that we've hurt, right? These people that have been, I don't want to say victim, but in the moment, the victims of our insecurities and the victim of our, our um, shadow and our undesirable selves. For whatever reason, those people had to show up like that for us to, to take that and get that lesson. And what a courageous fucking thing for them to do subconsciously to, to show up in that way. Um, it's hard to talk about this when you're speaking to someone that's, um, you know, a domestic violence victim or a rape victim or an abuse victim or people who've gone through some heavy stuff. But I know because I've seen people, I've seen people that have been raped by their father and their and their uncles as young children and held onto that for 50 years and being able to change their paradigm and and recognize how it actually benefited them um so i'm i'm like logically i know that but i'm also i guess wanting to just bring it to people's awareness that it starts by acknowledging it and acknowledging the desire to be a better person than you were yesterday and that's what i really really desire for me and for everyone that, that comes into contact with me. And that's what I want to, that's what I want to show them. And if I was, if I hadn't had the experience of fucking up, if I hadn't had the experience of being a fucking lowly drug addict, I haven't had felt the pain of fucking being homeless esque. If I hadn't felt the pain of living on zero dollars for weeks at a time, if I hadn't felt the pain of pushing people away from me that I really loved, then how could I speak on those topics to people in the future? How could I be there wholeheartedly for people going through similar stuff? So it's our shit now, not theirs. Even better when you understand that when people are treating you like that. Yeah, Beck. Hey, hey, Amy. Um, so there's always that, like the universe is always in balance. And I guess it's, it's just finding your voice speaking your truth always wanting to um to grow into a bigger better version of yourself and i don't know about you guys but i i've been accused of being too trusting in the past of being too um welcoming and too open to people but i'll tell you right now like the the amount of times i've been fucked over and hurt and abused and and put in um shitty situations by people that have been too open with is outweighed immeasurably by the amount of amazing people and amount of amazing experiences I've had because I've been open with people because of being forgiving because I've allowed people into my life that I know are amazing um and yeah that's I guess what I want to share and what I hope for for you guys to be able to do to be able to own your shit, to be able to make peace with whoever it was that you maybe have, have hurt in the past, share with them. I, a lot of people don't like the word sorry, and I don't like the word sorry either. Sorry is a, a bit the last thing, and, and I'll let you guys go. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll finish up after this. Sorry for me is a knee-jerk response, and it's a, it's a bullshit get-out-of-jail free card in a sense with that's just heartless and empty and I tried and I, I, I went a month or about three three to four weeks without saying sorry and the process you go through instead of saying sorry is you own what you did wrong the mistake you made or the fuck up you, you did you acknowledge how you may have hurt someone and the pain you may have caused the inconvenience you may have created and caused and then you share what you've learnt from the situation and from your behaviours, from your fuck up, from the mistakes that you made. And then you share what you're going to do in the future, from present to future, to, to ensure that that same mistake isn't made again. And that shows someone that, sorry, you don't need to fucking say sorry. Sorry is a fucking empty. What you need to do is own it. And that t shows a person that, all right, that person genuinely... Um, cared for me and didn't didn't want that to happen or maybe even if it was malicious there was some underlying factor there's always an underlying factor but 
they're willing to learn from the mistake, they're willing to move on, and they've also learned that they've they've got uh, they've learned from the mistake, but they're also going to move on with um, with a different practice so it doesn't happen again. And forgiveness isn't for for the other person. Forgiveness is for ourselves because if you're feeling triggered or hate or um, frustration or anxiety about some other person, it's got nothing to do with that person. Like you're the one carrying it around. If your enemy knew that you were hating on them and you were frustrated half of your day because you're thinking about them, that would make your enemy happy, right? So frustration is not about you. Mm -hmm. uh, frustration. Forgiveness isn't about you. Hey, mum. Mum's your bear. Hey, Enrique. Um, yeah, forgiveness is so you can free your energy, so you can come back to just loving yourself because if you... <laughs> If everything is a part of us, which it's common knowledge now that we're connect, we're, everything's connected, and if you're holding on to anguish or pain or fear or, or frustration or anger for anything outside of yourself, you're holding it. You're 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 giving that anger to yourself. You're angry at yourself. Best thing you can do is forgive both yourself and whatever it is that you feel anguish anguish and anger towards, so you can free up yourself and you can just give yourself and feel love towards that and towards yourself. Thanks, mum. <laughs> Yeah, so um, to all the people that I've caused pain and had um, made feel unsafe and 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 made feel anything other than um, love in the past, and a lot of friends on here as well. Like I, I see a lot of you guys and mum, <laughs> like you guys. I've haven't been a hundred percent even close to that a lot of the time. So this is towards you guys as well. Like for anyone that I haven't made feel um, complete love for me, I I um, I recognize that. And it's something that I am working vigorously on improving and continuous, continuously getting better tomorrow than I was today. And just making sure that what I did in the past to make anyone feel uncomfortable or unsafe or anything unsavory I'm gonna do my best to make sure that doesn't happen again so all you feel from me is love and gratitude and respect yeah love you all lots um hope you're having an amazing day night life keep being awesome and I'll speak to you soon if you got anything that came up for you comment below <laughs> I love you guys I'll chat to you soon. All right. Peace out.